What does spring mean to you? Well, I was sitting in the garden contemplating this recently when I came up with the idea for today's watercolour painting. Hi guys, Sarah here, welcome back to my channel and thank you for stopping by. In today's video I want to share the process of the first in a series of paintings I'll be doing inspired both by the changing seasons and a picture I did for Inktober this year. So grab a cuppa or your sketchbook and let's see if the vision I have for this piece actually works out on paper. For my materials I'll be using the single pigment palette of granulating watercolours that I curated last year and I'll be painting on Hanamula Expression watercolour paper which is 100% cotton with a cold press surface. The reference photo I used is by Stephen Fluck from Unsplash but I'll list everything down in the description box of this video if you want to take a look. So I've already drawn out my composition for this painting and I'm really excited to get started as it's a while since I painted in watercolour. My aim for the watercolour part of this painting is to take advantage of the granulating properties of the paint for some interesting fur texture on the rabbit. I'm not aiming for hyper-realism today, I just want to relax, enjoy the process and let the watercolours do their thing. So I'm going to start my first layer painting wet on wet using three colours. Buff Titanium by Daniel Smith, Goethite by Roman Schmall and Green Umber which is a Schmincke Horodan watercolour. I don't paint very quickly so I like to work in sections and start by pre-wetting just the rabbit's head using clean water on my brush. And when there's a nice even sheen on my paper, I can begin to add watercolour. To help with knowing where to place the different colours, I look back at the reference photo to see where the lightest and darkest areas of the fur are and loosely place my watercolours accordingly. So I use the buff titanium in the lightest areas and drop in the goethite and green umber in the areas where the fur is darker or in shadow. And because the paper is still damp, the colours mix together on the surface. I'm also dropping in some potter's pink to the inside of the ear whilst the paper is still wet. Potter's pink is a lovely granulating colour, so we'll add some interesting texture here. Moving down the body, I'm following the same process on this next section of fur. So pre-wetting the paper and then dropping in paint. At this stage I'm not concerned with details, but I do try and think about the direction of fur growth and use bolder sweeping strokes with my brush. Not adding too much detail too soon is something that I'm continuously working on, so if that's something you can relate to then try using a larger brush to paint your first layer. The one I'm using here is a size 12 round brush. It's still got a nice pointed tip for accuracy, but it encourages me to paint more freely without fussing too much. It's also important to remember that watercolour tends to dry lighter, especially when working in wet washes, so you can afford to go a bit darker than you might think. You can see what I mean on this section of fur in shadow here. It's dried a lot lighter, but I'm happy with it so far, and now this layer is dry, I can start to build in some depth by adding more colour and darker values in my next layer. I'm mixing some of the potter's pink I used in the rabbit's ear with some Sodalite Genuine. Sodalite Genuine is one of Daniel Smith's Primatech colours and one of my absolute favourites. On its own, it's a beautiful dark granulating blue-grey colour, but when mixed with the potter's pink, produces a lovely purpley grey. I use diluted Sodalite Genuine on its own, painting onto wet paper once again for the darker areas of fur on the rabbit's neck and chest. And on the ear I mix in more of the potter's pink. I dot it onto pre-wet paper again for a soft blended look without any hard edges. Further down the chest I could see more of a green-grey colour from the reference photo. So I mix Sodalite Genuine with some of the Goethite to make the colour I was after. Mixing the colours I needed from just these five helped me to simplify the painting and keep it looking harmonious. 
it's very tempting to want to use more, but for the look I was going for in this piece, I stuck with just these. I've been painting wet on wet up until now to keep soft mixes and edges, but here I add some definition to the lighter area of fur by dragging some of that darker mix onto the dry paper. I then add more concentrated paint to areas in shadow whilst the paper is still damp. I can lean the colour more towards blue-grey or more towards green-grey just by picking up paint from a different part of my palette. So here on the front paws I mixed in more Sodalite Genuine. And on the fur at the bottom here I lean the colour more towards the earthy goethite. So at this stage our little spring rabbit is starting to take shape. I was enjoying the limited palette of granulating colours and the textures and effects they gave me, but I still needed to bring it to life, so on this next layer I attempted to do just that. In order that I didn't cover up all of the texture I'd achieved in previous layers, I painted onto dry paper using a more concentrated mix of goethite and green umber and softening any edges I didn't want with a clean damp brush. I still tried to keep my brush strokes loose and focus more on clumps of fur and how the fur curved over different parts of the rabbit's body, rather than being a slave to the reference photo. Adding detail and sparkle to the eye was next, and this always helps bring any animal portrait to life. Here I used a very concentrated Sodalite Genuine to get a really deep dark blue-black. and added just a touch of cobalt blue on the highlight to really make it shine. I'm also painting a few more fur details around the eye, nose and ear, just to help draw focus to the face. I tried squinting at the reference photo rather than studying it too closely to help me pick out the main details without going overboard. With the face done, I took a step back and decided on a few adjustments to my values, as they looked a bit flat. But with watercolour, this is quite quickly and easily done by simply glazing over some transparent washes. I used the same paint mixes as before and applied the paint onto dry paper. So I darkened up the shadow areas, Added some darker, loose fur detail on the rabbit's back. Darkened the feet. And added some colour underneath the rabbit to ground him a bit. To finish off, I went in with my small eradicator brush from Rosemary & Co, just to lift out a few highlights in the fur and add contrast to the painting. And this is how it looked once dry. All that's left to do now is the lettering, which to be honest I was a bit nervous about. I really liked how my small Inktober sketchbook piece turned out, but adding text or typography to a painting is still very new to me and on this larger painting, there was every chance that I'd mess it up, but nothing ventured, nothing gained, so you'll have to let me know what you think. Originally, I thought I'd try painting the spring words in gouache, using either a spring colour or a gradient of colours, maybe even with pastel colours, but I just wasn't sure it would work next to the rabbit, and besides, the letters are quite small, so I thought I might have problems painting them in accurately. In the end, I opted for a black waterproof fineliner, thinking that I could always add some black outline to parts of the rabbit at the end to tie it all in together. I'm using a size 0.3mm fineliner and despite being apprehensive at the start, I actually really enjoyed this part. It was a lot of fun coming up with all of the things that reminded me of spring and using different styles of lettering and pictures to fit them all together. I have definitely got room for improvement, but this painting wasn't about creating a masterpiece, 
it was about having fun, trying out a new idea and enjoying the process. After all, that's how we grow as artists. I was pretty happy with the outcome, but I still felt like it was missing something. So I looked back to my sketchbook to try and work out what it was, because as it is, it just doesn't look springy enough. It needed more colour. A pop of spring green maybe, to hopefully bring it all together. So that's just what I did. After pre-wetting a large area of the background, I added in some sap green from my regular palette. So the big question is, did this now match up with the vision I had in my head at the start? Well surprisingly, I think it pretty much does. I mean obviously there are things about the lettering that could be improved upon and maybe I should have tried not to cram as many words in as I did. But I do love how the rabbit turned out and I think adding the green background made it feel that much more cohesive and spring-like. Let me know what you think and let me know what your favourite thing about spring is too. Please take a second to give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it, subscribe if you're new around here and share with anyone you think would enjoy it as well. Thank you so much for watching, take care and I'll see you all in the next video.